God's good, Lord. isn't he? Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, Glory to God. Glory. Now, how, many were here, how many were here Wednesday night? Quite a few of you were here Wednesday night. Did we have a good time Wednesday night? Yeah. Yes. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Well, you know, God's Word is true. Yes, it is. God's Word is true. And, uh, you know, as a pastor, sometimes uh, it's challenging. It's challenging to, to preach the Word without compromise. Because we have peers in the ministry, uh, other ministers that have been very successful in building big churches, who they, it seems that their goal is to teach all the other ministers how to build a big church, how to build a lot, get a lot of people in your church. The only problem with that is, is many of the methods that is used to build a big church and to draw a lot of people to your church are the kind of methods where you compromise the Word of God. Yes. And you just tell people things they want to hear and tickle their ears. The Bible says in the last days people will be lovers of, them, of pleasures more than lovers of God. It says and they'll run to teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. So, so I guess somebody read part of the Bible and they saw that, hey, if I tell people what they want to hear, people will run to me. Mm -hmm. And they found out that is a true method to grow a church. The only problem is, is you end up having a lot of people that don't know Jesus. And a lot of people that are living in sin that have not learned to repent. Right. It's almost become a bad word to use the word repent in church nowadays. But the message of the gospel is the message of repentance. Amen. That is the message of the gospel. Yes. The Bible says John the Baptist came preparing the way of the Lord. Yes. And he cried, repent! Turn away from your sins. And many of the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, came to hear him. And, and the, many of them were wicked people that lived in wickedness. And he said, who, who has told you to come out here? You need to repent. You need to turn away from your sin. You need to turn to God. Yes. And that's what Jesus came was to deliver people from the power of sin yes. and iniquity. But we have to repent. The Bible says, God calls unto His people and He said, if my people which are called by my name, those who say they are God's people, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then shall I hear from heaven. And then shall I heal their lands. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. And so we as a people of God who declare ourselves to be children of God, who declare ourselves to be Christians, we should be the very first to listen and yes. hear if there's anything in our lives, yes. in our hearts, yes. in our character that needs to be adjusted. We need to open our eyes and we need to see and we need to turn away from any unrighteousness and turn to God. You may say, well, God knows my heart and I have turned to God, but we have to repent. Amen. One day Jesus was going along ministering. People were following Him and there was a uh, short man named Zacchaeus. We used to sing a song about it. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was in he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord to see. And Jesus said, I'm going to go to your house and eat with you. And Jesus went to the sinner's house. And when Jesus came into his house, the man repented. And he said, everything that I've stolen, everything that I've done, I'm going to return it. As much as every, to everything I have, I'm going to return it. You know, abundantly over what I've got, over what I've stolen, what I've taken and Jesus said, this day has salvation come into this house. Amen. This day has salvation, deliverance come into this house. And so, Jesus came. Now we say, well, John the Baptist, sure, he preached repentance. But when Jesus began to preach, look with me in Matthew. Praise you, Father. John the Baptist, he prepared... The way of the Lord. Hallelujah. He prepared the way of the Lord and began to preach repent. Turn away from your sin and turn to God.
in chapter 3, well, in chapter 3 of Matthew, it says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness in Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness. John the Baptist was prophesied by Isaiah saying he would be the one, a voice crying in the wilderness, preparing ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. In other words, there is a straight path that gets us to heaven. Yes. You used to say, you, that they walk, walk, need to walk straight and narrow. Have That's you ever right. heard of that? Amen. There is a path that gets us to heaven. Yes, it is. We need to not turn to the right hand or to the left. We need to follow God's ways. We need to follow God Amen. so that we get to heaven. Yes. I want to get to heaven. Amen. You know, life goes pretty fast. Yes, it does. Now, if you're young, there's some in here younger than me. If you're young, life seems like there's a lot of life going. But as you get older, you find out life goes by. Boom, 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 boom. Before you know it, you're older. Huh? Before we know it, we'll be home, right? Amen. Glory to God. The Apostle Paul said, I have to keep my flesh under control daily. He said, I've got to keep my body under. He said, lest after preaching the gospel to so many others, I myself should become a castaway. We need to follow God, folks. Amen. All right? We need to follow God's ways. And the same John the Baptist, he had raiment of camel's hair. He was not dressed in the fancy clothes. That's right. Somebody killed a camel and he took the camel's hair. Hair and made, made clothes out of it. A leather girdle about his loins, and his meat, or the kind of food he ate, was locusts and wild honey. Grasshoppers and wild honey. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. Tom says, Mmm, I love dipping those grasshoppers in that honey. <laughs> Glory to God. He, then he went out to Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan and were baptized of him. People came from all over, and they were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Now the confession that they made of their sins was the same kind of confession that Zacchaeus made. Was in that they were repenting of their sins. They weren't just saying, I am a sinner. They were saying, I am a sinner, and I'm turning away from my sins. We see on down verse 11, it says, John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Repentance means turning away from your sins and turning unto God. Amen. Repentance, the word repentance literally means turning away from what you were doing and doing just the opposite. We see the word first used in the book of Genesis where God said, God looked at man's evil. after 15, about 1,500 years. And he said, their, the intents of their heart are only evil continually. Their thoughts are only evil continually. And the Bible says, and it repented the Lord that He had made man. So He said, I will destroy man from the face of the earth whom I created. And so God repented that He made man and so he turned around and did the opposite and destroyed man from the face of the earth. Fortunately, Noah found grace yes. in the eyes of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because he served God with all his heart. And the Bible said that he was one that walked with God. I want us as children of God to have people say they walk with God. Amen. Amen. I want people to be able to say that about me. And they see me. He walks with God. Don't you? Amen. Yes. And John the Baptist, he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost and with fire. And some people think God doesn't do that stuff anymore. But He's still baptizing people with Absolutely. Holy Ghost. Absolutely. Amen. Glory Thank to God. You, Lord. 
In Acts chapter 2, it says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire. Say fire. fire. And it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance. Yes. He is still filling people with the Holy Ghost. People oh, still yes. talking in tongues. Yes. The fire of God still in people's lives yes. that serve Him with all their heart. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so we see this message of repentance. Next chapter, Acts chapter 4, after Jesus was baptized in the, by John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit descended upon Him as a dove, then chapter 4 it says, Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. And in the Greek it says, it says to be tempted of the devil, but in the Greek it just says, And He was tempted of the devil. In other words, the Holy Spirit didn't lead him to be tempted. The Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to fast and pray. Yes. But while he was there, he was tempted of the devil. Anytime you're doing something God calls you to do, the devil's going to try to tempt you. Yes. The devil's going to try to pull you off track. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Oh. We do have an adversary, the devil, but if we'll submit ourselves to God and resist the devil, he will flee from us. He will flee from us. You know what flee means? Run, run as though in terror. terror. Say run, run as though in terror. terror. Run, run as though in terror. terror. When, you resist, when you submit yourself to God, that means obey God. When you submit yourself to God, that means obey God. Amen. And resist the devil. He will flee from you. He'll run as though in terror. And he'll come back, but that's okay. You got the Word, you got Jesus, you got the power of the Holy Spirit of God Amen. with you, right? Thank you, Lord. And you can just tell the devil, get behind him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. You Amen. just take authority over the devil. He's under our feet. Yes, yes. he is. Hallelujah. Thank you. And so he went to the wilderness and he was tempted of the devil. When he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. And the devil came to him three times and three times he tempted him. And every time Jesus resisted him with the Word of God. Amen. He said, this is what the Word said. This is what the Word said. Yes. And then one of, the, one of those times, the devil says, well, the Word also says. Do you know the devil can quote the Word of God? Yes. You know what he does? He twists the Word of God. He twists it. He perverts it. In the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, the devil, did, the devil said, well, didn't God say that you can eat of all any of the trees of the garden? And Eve said, yeah, but he also said, yeah, but of the tree of the garden of good and evil, thou shalt not surely eat, neither shalt thou touch it, lest thou shalt die. And then the devil said, oh, you won't die. He's been a liar from the beginning. Amen. You know, the very first lie the devil told man was, you can sin and you won't die. That's the very first lie the devil told. That's, that's right. Do you know the devil's still telling that lie? The devil's saying, oh, you can do that. You won't die. God's merciful. God's gracious. God's a good God. God wouldn't send you to hell. God knows your heart. Sure does. God knows you love Him. Do you know what Jesus said? He said, if you really love me, you'll keep my commandments. Yes. That's right. Yes. In 1 John it says, this is the love of God. That we keep His commandments. If you say you love God, but you don't keep His commandments, you are deceiving yourself. You're dece we're deceiving ourselves. If we say that we love God, but don't keep His commandments. In other words, if we really love God, we'll obey Him. If we're really the servants of God, we will obey Him. Amen. Paul said in, in Romans chapter 6, he said, whoever you yield your members to obey, that's whose servant you become. And so when Adam and Eve had this choice, when the devil said to them, oh, you won't die. God didn't really mean that. When the devil said that, they had a choice. Do I believe what God said and do what God said? Or do I believe what the devil said and do what the devil said? The devil said, go ahead, eat up. He said, don't it look good? Feel it, doesn't 